And so we'll start with roll call. Um, Linda? Here. Rodney? Hey. Hi, Rodney. Counselor Dubs? Here. Kathy? Here. Marilyn, I don't see Marilyn today. And Emma, I don't see. I think Marilyn's here, but she just not turned her videos not on. Oh, thank you. I didn't know that was Marilyn. Okay. But but yeah, I don't know. Rob, Marilyn, is that you? Can you unmute yourself if that's Marilyn Claire? <laughs> Um, so we'll proceed with public comments. Are there any public comments today? I want to say something. Rodney would like to say something. Sim down, do something. I could like to talk. I put my mother and my mother. You memory. Like to talk about memory? memory. 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 Yep, memory. Memory what? Memory. Memory. I'm sorry, Rodney, I'm not understanding. I'm talking about memory. Oh, I'd like to talk about Memorial Hall. Memorial oh, yeah. Hall. Memorial Hall. Okay. I would like to talk about it when you give me a chance. I would like to talk about it when you give me a chance during the meeting. That, that would be great. That could, Rodney, that could go during the other mm. business not anticipated. So at the at the end of the meeting, that would be a perfect time to talk about it. Good. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Any uh, any public comments before we move on? All right. So approval of the previous minutes from February twentieth. I trust everyone has read those. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. And a second. A second. Thanks. I'm second. It's the kid. Right, it's All right. second. <laughs> Thank you both. All right. So a roll call. Um, Linda. Here. And you approve the minutes? Yes. Sorry, Sorry I was not clear. Um, Rodney, do you approve the minutes? Rodney, do you approve the minutes? Yes. 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 Thank you. Councillor Dubs? Yes. Kathy? Yes. And Marilyn? All right. And I also approve the minutes. Um, so the first, oh, actually, before we jump in with court, um, I just wanted to let you all know the second half mm -hmm. of the agenda we're going to shuffle things around. So the snow removal ordinance will be the last thing mm -hmm. that we talk about. And um, after the movie viewing, we're going to going to talk about the disability pride month um, to see if folks have any ideas for that. So just a heads up that mm -hmm. just a little shuffling there. So um, mm -hmm. Without further ado, and I am so sorry, Court, I don't remember your last name. <laughs> Court is here from Planning and Sustainability to talk with us about the grant for Terrace Trails. Thank you so much for joining us, Court. Yeah, thank oh, you, Amy. You it, keep it, it on my screen, sorry. Keep Court, right there. <laughs> That's fine, no problem. <laughs> yeah, so uh, hi, folks. Um, I'm Court Klein from, uh, from the Office of Planning and Sustainability. Uh, I work closely with Keith on the Community Development Block Grant, and I'm doing some other grant work, including this grant um, that the city got. Uh, is called the CHI Grant, which stands for the Community Health Inclusivity Index. 
which was um, which was a tool that the city participated in back in 2019 to look around to look at um, health equity in the city and to determine ways in which the city could be better and be more um, more equitable around various health measures. And one of the good things about this grant is that um, we one of the ways that it can be used is to develop um, accessible trail networks. And, and there's a lot of different ways in which other communities have used it, but primarily that's what Northampton's been looking at um, because the Chi Index showed that we need to be able to make more outdoor spaces um, available to everyone and make them more equitable for everyone. And so um, our office, um, primarily Sarah LaValle and Tom and East, um, in our office, looked at some of the conservation areas in, in Northampton, specifically um, looking at which ones would be um, the easiest ones to convert and uh, make more accessible to people. Um, and one of the ones that we looked at was the terrace trails um, located right off of Pomeroy Terrace, um, adjacent to the college church. And, um, and it's a small conservation area. It's about a little over six acres that the city has. It's, it's heavily used by folks um, that in the neighborhood, but not many people know about in the downtown area. And so we thought this would be a, uh, a really good area to try to work on, on creating a network of accessible trails. Um, there's one existing trail there now, but that's accessible, but it's not in such great condition. And the accessibility project um, there was done many years ago. And so part of what this little $22,000 grant is, is to um, basically improve that trail, the main trail there, and then to add another um, couple sections. And I can, I'll pull up a map if, um, can, can I share my screen? Um, I can, okay, let me, let me do that and I'll share the screen with you guys and then you can, you can uh, see what, what we're talking about here, or what I'm talking about here. Um, let me go back to Zoom. Let's see if I'll pull this up. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry about that. Bear with me, folks, here. Uh, share my screen. And all right. So here's a map, and hopefully, um, hopefully you folks can see that okay. Um, Basically, the existing uh, accessible trail is the blue one, and so we're gonna we're gonna take part of this twenty two thousand dollars and we're gonna regrade that trail to make it more ADA compliant, and then um, put trap rock on it, and then the two uh, pink trails are the other parts of the trails that. Um, that we're going to add to create this loop basically and you can see that college church is right up here and there'll be um, a couple additional accessible um, parking spaces there um, that folks will be able to to use to access the trails and um, so we've gotten some really good feedback we had a public meeting on february 27th and amy attended the meeting um, and um, and we got some really good feedback from folks that that were there. Some of the folks were volunteers that have worked on the trails in the past, and some of them were um, folks that live in the neighborhood. And um, uh, we had um, we had Andy Bristol from Stavros come over, and um, Amy and and Andy provided some really good feedback from folks that are using. Um, using wheelchairs about ways in which we can improve the preliminary plans that we have um, for these trails. But um, that's pretty much what the project is. And I'm, I'm happy to take any questions if folks have questions about it. Or um, we hope eventually that we'll be able to add the green loop to the trail. Um, and then we'll have a, a really nice kind of network of, of trails over there. But with this current grant, um, it's a smallish grant. And basically all we can do is, uh, is 
to work on the, mm -hmm. the pink and the blue right now. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what I've got. Mm -hmm. Right. Does, do folks have any questions about it or? Can I add um, something sure. for you? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lovely spot and um, it, and really enjoyable to be, to be back in the woods with the birds in there. Mm -hmm. um, we had talked about kind of dreaming for down the road. Um, wouldn't it be nice to have an accessible entrance off? Um, is that Hawk? Mm -hmm. The end of Pomeroy. Pomeroy, yeah, yeah. And, and you know that little red trail on the left to have mm -hmm. it be able to be accessible and connect with the ones with this grant that are being made accessible. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we had talked also about um, if you're coming from town in a mobility device that the 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 grade down the driveway next to the church is it's definitely at my upper limit of comfort of mm -hmm. going down in a, a manual chair where I'm you know holding my my yeah. hands to break um you know in other devices it might not be as as uh as the upper limit but um you know wouldn't it be nice to have some kind of a switchback in there mm -hmm. I don't know if the space or budget allows for that um and then we'd also talked about some signage because mm -hmm. goodness, I had no idea these trails existed right. and mm -hmm. I felt like I was going onto private property. If mm -hmm. I was there alone, I wouldn't have, you know, mm -hmm. gone back there. Um, so some mm -hmm. signage will be um, nice to have to let folks know that it's back there and, and mm -hmm. available. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was some of the really good feedback that we got. And I think with, um, you know, we'll see we're we're just starting to get quotes on on the work itself and we'll see how much we can, you know, how much of the stuff that we can get done with the grant. Uh, initially, the grant was for 18,000 and then um, and then the state kicked in another 4,000. So there may actually be some additional money that will come mm -hmm. our way. Um, it is, uh, I think you can get this grant up to three years in a row. And so there will be the possibility of applying for more money next year. Um, mm -hmm. The city's had good luck getting this type of grant based on the CHI. So yeah. I think that's a good possibility. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah. And any questions or uh, comments for court? Mm -hmm. I do hope um, everyone can get out to explore. Um, Linda was there as as well at the meeting. Thanks for going. Oh yeah, 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 great. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. So exactly, fantastic. and we'll have some kind of a an event to celebrate the opening once the work is done on this, and you know we'll certainly let everybody know about this, and um, yeah, and Sorry. invite you all to. <laughs> Rodney, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go, go ahead, Rodney. Go ahead. We, we, the access money come from. Where does the access money come from? Yeah, so it comes. It comes through the state. Through uh, the it's it's interesting. It's it's from this group called the Mass Health Officers Association. Is where where it's funded and. We get um we we got money and Stavros mm -hmm. also got money um as providing technical support and feedback to uh, to the city for this. So yeah. So it comes from the Mass Health Officers Association. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, letting me tell you folks about it. And I'm excited. Um, we look forward to seeing you all out there, hopefully, at some point. Absolutely. So, Thank you so okay. much for your work, Court. Really yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, anytime. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Um, so next, uh, Sarah Lavalley.
is here from also from the Office of Planning and Sustainability. We'll talk about the Pine Grove Accessible Trail. Thank you so much, Sarah, mm -hmm. for being here. Sure, no problem. Uh, some more exciting news to share about accessible trails and upcoming plans. Mm -hmm. uh, so the city acquired the, the old Pine Grove golf course on Old Wilson Road to add to the Rocky Hill Greenway mm -hmm. uh, just before COVID in 2019. Um, this was acquired with the intent of restoring mm -hmm. the area and um, bringing its natural floodplain functions back, uh, creating some natural flood storage, and addressing some of the, the downstream impacts that Arcadia was seeing. And it, this is a fairly small watershed that Nashawana Brook goes through, uh, but the golf course really had an impact on how the area was utilized. You know, a golf course looks green, but it, it's really more mm -hmm. like a like a parking lot um, as far as ecological function goes, uh, rather than a, a green open space. Uh, so we we did some initial work by pulling out some of the tile drains and irrigation mm -hmm. that the golf course had installed using state. Mm -hmm. Municipal Vulnerability Program and CPA mm -hmm. funds. Um, it, that started to have an immediate effect. You could see things getting wetter. Um, number of bird species were increasing and the, the area mm -hmm. really started to rewild fairly quickly. Um, we then have uh, obtained some additional funds through the State Department of Ecological Restoration to continue the work there. Um, we were designated a, a priority project at the state level, so that that's um, DER's recognition that this is a project that has uh, significant ecological benefits and potential. So we've been able to hire consultant teams through DER to continue planning for the restoration design. Uh, but we also know that this area has tremendous recreation potential. You know, it was always used as a golf course, which um, although a lot of people enjoyed it for after work and, and leagues and even going to the, the clubhouse there, mm -hmm. uh, it, it wasn't able to be accessed by a, a large number of residents, but that's starting to change. Um, people are really starting to enjoy the trails that are out there, bird watching and hiking, uh, cross country mm -hmm. skiing, although not so much this year and, and just getting out and enjoying this area that's fairly new. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we have always planned for an accessible trail uh, at this location. It, it's ideal because the, the grade makes sense. It doesn't present the challenges that a lot of our other conservation areas and greenways do. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been able to utilize some of these ecological restoration funds to also be able to plan for a trail network. Um, and I'll share my screen. Uh, so you are getting the, the first look at our, um, our initial mm -hmm. rendering of the area. So this includes uh, accessible trail network and additional features. So this works with some of the cart paths that are already there, um, but also shifts them over to avoid some of the areas that we're, we're starting to see uh, wetting and turning into habitat areas. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we did have a um, public event there in mm -hmm. November and people went out and walked the trails and, and saw the areas mm -hmm. it starts to progress. And we're really excited about the, the potential here. Uh, so you can see that we're we're planning a parking area. Currently, mm -hmm. people are parking along the side of Old mm -hmm. Wilson Road, but that's not really ideal. Um, that will definitely include some accessible spaces. There's a mm -hmm. kiosk currently near the stream here, but that will be relocated to the parking area. Uh, so this will, will be the, the main accessible loop, um, potentially with, with another one um, to the southern end of the site. So we'll we'll have you know, views of what's now the irrigation impoundment, but will be uh, restored to its pre-dam conditions once that dam is removed uh, and lots to see and do there. So it's small writing, but you can see all the, the exciting things that we're, we're planning. So this is all still a long way off. Um, the, the trail is fairly accessible now. It, it will be improved um, and made to meet all of the standards. The surface will be improved. We don't have final designs for what that would look like, uh, but we wanted to bring you in early in the process. So that that's the that's the overview. Um, lots more to come. Thank you. Can I ask the the uh, the tough question about timeline? Yeah, so we're we are planning um, for permitting stage now. So we'll be moving through that during the summer. And it's really contingent on funding. We were able to secure some CPA funding that we hoped to do an initial accessible mm -hmm. loop with, but as the site you know, rapidly started to change, we realized that that just didn't make sense. We'd be 
um, potentially throwing money at something mm -hmm. that wouldn't be able to be there, maybe even in the short term, never in the long term. Um, but mm -hmm. the trail will be one of the primary drivers of this. Um, although you know the whole site will be restored, mm -hmm. we know that people want to get out there and, and experience mm -hmm. and we want to open that up to everyone. So that doesn't really answer your question, but but we hope mm -hmm. soon. <laughs> um, I'd heard that mm -hmm. water plays a big role in determining when the construction can start. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the what the golf course has done is really to channelize Nashawanic Brook with the intent of getting this water off the site as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to be hitting your golf ball into a mucky area or a um, and you know something that's squishy and gross you don't want your feet to get wet when you're on the golf course mm. but we want this area to hold back more water and serve as uh, natural flood storage mm. but with that comes some uncertainty about where the wetland areas will develop so that mm. these lower lying areas here uh and the area to the south um where the the water is currently shunted off the site as quickly as possible mm. will, will definitely be changing um but Based on initial designs, this this seems like it would be a, a fairly safe spot uh, for an accessible loop. So and it's not quite finalized, but based on what we're seeing so far, uh, this seems like it would make sense. Um, can you just orient um, for those of us who have been out there, um, where on this map are the two two maybe two metal uh, walkways that were laid. Sure. Just so, I'm having trouble orienting. You yeah, know? so those are temporary. Th those won't right. be part of the long-term picture. And that's just getting us across an area mm -hmm. that has turned out to be much wetter, much quicker than we thought that it would be. So those are right. in this area here. Okay, so not on a future trail. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in the vicinity of the trail, um, but that's getting so wet mm -hmm. so fast that it, it probably won't make sense to include them there. So it, this has gotcha. shifted up a little bit more. Okay, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Do do other folks have questions? Sarah, can you talk about where beavers are going to live and eat and what they will eat? About where, bear, did you say bears? Mm -hmm. Beavers. Oh, beavers. Yeah, <laughs> well, bears are all around, but uh, so one of the exciting things that we're we're planning to bring in uh, mm -hmm. is a, a beaver buffet. So in, um, beavers are our friends in creating wetland areas. They create a lot of valuable habitat. Mm -hmm. They've really been extirpated from this site. They're not a friend of a golf course. So you know, just by virtue of not having a lot of stuff to eat, they haven't found this a nice place to be. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll be reintroducing some willow plantings, um, things that beavers will find attractive, and we hope that they will find a home. Uh, south of um, where the dam is currently located. That's awesome. <laughs> Any other questions for Sarah while we have her here? Great. Thank you so much for that update and keeping us in the, the loop, no pun intended. <laughs> about that project it's the, we are super supportive i think i speak on hopefully on behalf of the whole commission that mm -hmm. we're very excited and supportive of the mm -hmm. efforts of planning and sustainability mm -hmm. to make that happen for the community okay. great um you know and and as the details develop we'll certainly involve you mm -hmm. in those as well i mean this is big big picture at the moment um but we'll be drilling down into it as, as funding mm -hmm. arises Fantastic. We will love to be involved. And if there's anything we can do ever, please mm -hmm. reach out. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So next up is the public service announcement, the PSA on snow removal. So we had talked briefly about it um, at our last meeting. Um, so just an update on what's happening. I reached out to uh, Northampton Open Media and they can help us mm -hmm. is amazing so um someone named al williams um i have i talked with him on the phone after emailing and so mm -hmm. the ball right now is in our court 
So we need to come up with the messaging oh. and a script. So probably about 30 seconds worth. Um, and then, so when we're ready, when we have kind of our mm -hmm. script written out, um, then we can reach back out to him and they'll work with the footage that Jeremy and Keith took last year. And Keith, I think you said you had some stock footage as well that you had looked mm -hmm. up. And then if um, someone here wants to go in and read the script, then um, one of us can do that. If no one wants to do it, they're happy to do mm -hmm. it. Um, and then they put it all together and then just will upload the link to us and done. He made it sound doable, mm -hmm. which is great. This is not, I don't know anything about this. So <laughs> um, I was super excited to, to hear that they can support us with this. So I'm mm -hmm. wondering, we are a group of seven right now, so we can only have a mm -hmm. committee of three because of quorum rules. So I didn't know if there were two or three people who wanted to kind of work on the messaging to bring back to the commission for approval. Does that mm -hmm. sound, or, or other ideas for a plan for how to approach this? Jeremy, yeah. Oh yeah, I think a subcommittee is a good idea and I'd be happy to be on that to help with the messaging. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Any other takers to work with Jeremy on the messaging of the PSA? Mm -hmm. Kind of a creative fun project. Mm. We'd be happy to, I don't know if I'm allowed to as just a member officially of the public, but I'd be happy to. I could just sort of show up in the coffee shop when you're there <laughs> accidentally and take part. Um, I yeah. am comfortable with that. I, I don't know if there's, uh, Keith, any regulations that we're missing here? No, I mean, if it was a true subcommittee, it would have to be posted because we want the public to be there. So it's totally fine. Okay. Awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you, Jacob. So do you two want to get started on it and see what you come up with? And then, you know, if anyone else says, oh, yes, I actually do want to join, then um, could reach out to Keith if you don't have Jeremy's email and uh, coordinate that way. Does that sound oh, That sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much good. Sounds good. Spearheading that mm -hmm. for us. Of course, no problem. Fantastic. Um, and there is the East Hampton PSA um, that we could all watch again for ideas or or not. But that's we know that's out there. Um, great, thank you. So, oh, next is updates from City Council. Oh, so, great. Uh -huh. Jones, would you um, share any updates that you might have for the commission? Sure, yeah. Um, so at our most recent council mm -hmm. meeting, I, I read the letter um, from the commission to um, Councillor Marianne the Barge mm -hmm. about her longtime service on the commission. And mm -hmm. uh, she was very, very thankful for that. And mm -hmm. I was very happy for our, about our letter. Um, and then at the same meeting, I also announced, mm -hmm. I made it during the announcement section, mm -hmm. I announced the screening for Go On Be Brave for April 5th. And so hopefully that will have re reached a few people and uh, hopefully they'll come to the screening. Uh, and mm -hmm. then also um, just for some, uh, the project right now that I'm working on that I think is pretty exciting is the um, it's a resolution um, that we're still drafting, but I'm, I'm working on it with the uh, council vice president, Rachel Maori, mm -hmm. and um, we're drafting a resolution in support of the Northampton ADA transition plan. And um, so even though this is a, the ADA, ADA transition plan is already technically Northampton policy. We're, we're sort of, we want to like renew Northampton's commitment to it. So it's, you know, to um, sort of make, make the other counselors aware and get to make, to help other people in the public become more aware of it also so that we can all like, you know, it could be more of an active conversation that's happening in the city. 
So mm -hmm. that's the plan, and um, I'm hoping to have that ready for our next council meeting, which would be March 20th, March 21st. Yeah, so very soon, hopefully. And then, so hopefully by the next mm -hmm. Disability Commission meeting, I that resolution will have passed, and uh, we will have renewed our commitment to the ADA transition plan. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your work. Mm -hmm. Of and course. For, for all of those things, but fantastic. Cool. Leave Thank you. In charge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks mm -hmm. for the update. Yeah. Uh, and if, if anybody was, sorry, I was just going to say it, if anybody wanted to attend that meeting, you could attend on Zoom or in person. Um, and you could like feel free to make public comment in support of the resolution if you mm -hmm. wanted to. It's not like necessary, but it would, it would definitely be helpful if you wanted to show up show your support can you share that date again oh yes that um so the meeting would be on march 21st um thursday night at 7 p.m and um public comment is basically the, the first thing on our agenda so if you, anybody wanted to make comment and i'll send the link also i can i'll send it to keith the 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 um the council meeting link that's great if, yeah yeah, that, that'd be awesome. Thank cool. you. No problem. Mm -hmm. So next is the Go On, Be Brave mm -hmm. uh, movie showing. Um, so just a short update on that. I just went to the space, mm -hmm. um, the Northampton Center for the Arts, just to check out their space. Probably most of you have been, but I hadn't been yet. Mm -hmm. um, it's this beautiful space and the the room that we're renting is called the flex room and so once you go up the ramp and the two doors mm -hmm. push buttons to get in to, to the main building and then the flex room is off of that um so it's mm -hmm. on the same level and there'll be spaces there they are going to be risers but there'll be spaces in front without chairs for folks with mobility devices. Um, there will be closed captioning and there will be audio descriptions. Um, and what else? The restrooms um, are very hard to get into. So um, one of the doors is going to be propped open and then you go in and kind of go around the corner and get to the stalls. Um, so, so it will be accessible that night. <laughs> um, and what else am I missing? Emma or Jeremy, am I, can you help me remember anything? Oh, masks are encouraged. Sorry, Marilyn, were you going to ask something? The time? Yes. So, Keith, if you don't mind pulling up the flyer. So um, this was a group effort. Josh from FNT and then Jess from Mass Bike did the flyer. So the doors will open. Oh, there we go. Uh, the doors will open at 515. So there'll be tables up in the entryway. So if anyone here wants to sit at a table and um, talk to anyone about the Disability Commission. Um, be nice if we had some little, remember those little flyers, like mini flyers that we had designed for the, the movie last year, the Crip Camp movie? Maybe we can um, find those and print some of those up, but um, Anyway, so all the different organizations that are helping to put this on will have tables there. They, I think All Out Adventures will have a couple recumbent trikes for people to, um, to look at and maybe sit on. Um, so there's food from Miss Florence Diner. So little snacks kind of thing and mingling and checking out the other organizations starting at 515. The film starts at 6 p.m. and then will be done by eight. It's just under two hours. And then there'll be some kind of 
discussion. We're still trying to figure out if it's going to be small group or large group. It might be dependent on how many people actually show up that night, what makes sense, and mm -hmm. more mingling at that point. Um, it's offered on a sliding scale, so mm -hmm. zero to $35. Uh, we're mm -hmm. guessing that it will cost about, I think it was 17 or $18 per person if you, mm -hmm. you know, for the actual costs. Um, so that's why it's from zero to 35. Um, mass encourage, if anyone rides a trike or a bike, there's a free valet of parking available. And all of the accessibility details, if you go to that link at the top, um, either scanning the QR code or the bit.ly uh, back front slash be brave 0405, then all the accessibility details are listed on that mm -hmm. page where you can buy tickets ahead of time. Um, you can also get your tickets when you show up. <laughs> Thanks, Keith, for sharing that. Any um, any questions, comments, concerns, ponderings? I did share the the image in the chat, but I'll try to include it with the minutes as well, so you all have that. And we um, just also made up social a social media um, image, so all the organizations and um, and I believe the city will also be sharing um, the social media posts out. So hopefully, um, we'll spread mm -hmm. the word. If anyone is interested in helping put up flyers. We're getting flyers printed um, either today or tomorrow, and um, they will be at All Out Adventures, and so anyone can stop by and pick up flyers to uh, help distribute. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd be happy to help get flyers to you if if that um, eases the, the way. Uh, so if anyone does anyone know they're ready and willing to put some flyers up? Jeremy? Yeah, well, um, I can definitely put some up in my area. Like, I can't go out too far, but, like, yep. um, in, like, the surrounding buildings around my, you know, uh, Main Street, you know, like, downtown area, I could definitely work on. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. And thank you, Ben. I just saw you said uh, you'll print out the image and put it up at Forbes. Thank you so much. Great. Any other questions or thoughts? I I hope um, a bunch of us can can go April fifth. I know it's uh, you know the the time mm -hmm. might not work for everybody, but um, I hope to see you all there. I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> Good. Um. So next is the Disability Pride Month, which is July, and so bringing that forward mm -hmm. to see if there are any ideas. Emma, do you want to um, start us off with introducing it or thought? Mm -hmm. or... Yeah, so um, obviously last year we did a screening of Crip Camp for like a disability pride month. Um, and I was hoping that I could propose that this disability pride month we do a screening of the movie that Jeremy was in. Um gosh, I don't when did it even come out? It feels like a few months ago. Well we um we had a movie premiere in New York, but technically the film isn't actually out. You know what I mean? Uh, we've okay. only had we've only had one screening so far, but we can totally um, schedule screenings. That's kind of like where we're at right now, you know, scheduling cool. individual screenings. Cool. Yeah. So thank you. That'd be great. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know if it's possible, but I think that would just be <laughs> so cool. I, I'd love that. I think that'd be a great idea. If folks don't know, the name of the movie is Tallywhacker. Is there a website, Jeremy? Um, we have we have um a social media page on Facebook and Instagram. 
Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, we don't have like a website at the moment, but but um, but yeah, it's called Tally Wacker. It's basically about my experiences like mm-hmm. as a musician with a disability. And um, the movie is about a band, basically. It's fiction, but it's loosely based on my experiences in a band, mm-hmm. basically. And, and uh, it's a fun movie. It's a comedy. Um, I think you might enjoy it. So I, I think it'd be really, mm-hmm. really fun. <laughs> Just an FYI, if you Google it, there is another meaning, mm-hmm. apparently, for Tallywhacker. Yes. Is- <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a comedy. Uh, that was my way of trying to in, uh, imply that yes, it's uh, uh, there are some. some the up. top, the top result is like a bunch of dudes in very skimpy shorts. <laughs> <laughs> the meaning of tallywhacker has an old meaning. Uh, I won't, I won't disclose it here, but um, it's yes. It's Nothing is safe movie. on the internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> fantastic. Um, but yeah, also, if you guys wanted to screen the movie beforehand in case there mm-hmm. is, I don't know, just in case you think it's like, you wanted to see it just in case, you know, you, in case there's anything that you thought would be inappropriate or something, you could watch it ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool. Um, I know it would be very mm-hmm. hard to rival this idea, but I don't want to close out yeah. any other ideas if anyone else mm-hmm. had other ideas for how we would celebrate um, Disability Pride Month for in July, for the month of July. So any other ideas mm-hmm. to put on the table before we um, mm-hmm. narrow in? Mm-hmm. Um, Amy, it's not my idea, but uh, I just, I do know that um, the members of mm-hmm. the Amherst Commission and I think East Hampton, they reached out to me afterwards and then pretty recently. Um, so they definitely want to be part of something. And I don't know if they have, mm-hmm. they have uh, their own ideas, but um, mm-hmm. I'm sure if we did something, they would like to be involved. Sometimes. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. That would be great to work together. Um, so we are in March. <laughs> Would it make sense for a few folks to meet to just have initial conversations to try to um, sketch out, you know, different ideas for mm-hmm. location? I don't want us to be um, behind on organizing the event. And since we only meet monthly, it, um, you know, is, is limiting that way with organizing? Any thoughts on, mm-hmm. on doing that? Not that you have to sign up for it, but just the concept of a few people meeting, mm-hmm. does that make sense to folks? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah, I'd be happy to help. Um, it, Thoughts on, can other people chime in about thoughts on um, showing Tallywhacker? Or do we want to keep the ideas open still? Or do we want to pass it on to a few people who are going to meet to discuss? Um, can, can other folks who haven't chimed in let us know what um, what your thoughts are on on all given, this. given that it's a whole month, I feel like we could do Tallywhacker and something else. I don't know if that's organizationally possible, but um, I think that I like that idea. I was thinking something outdoors could be cool, like um, some sort of celebration. You know, I think that I don't, you know, I don't know exactly what that would look like yet, but some sort mm-hmm. of outdoor celebration might be fun. So, you know, raising awareness of disability rights and things like that. At the Abilities Expo, they usually have um, this like troop of wheelchair dancers. I don't know if they travel for events, but they're really good and it would be fun. To, I don't know. There's another thing they do too, like the wheelchair painting, which is like a fun communal thing where you roll over paint. Mm-hmm. Um, 
They have good reviews at that. Let's say it again. That's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty fun. That sounds cool. Those are both at the Ability Expo? I've seen them at the Abilities Expo when I lived in LA. I, I'm yeah. assuming that they travel around, but um, I don't, you know, I have no idea about their availability or anything, but I'm yeah, sure we're cool. painting one on our own. I don't know that we need. Super cool. Yeah, Rodney. Rodney, go ahead. I have a question. I have a question. I have a question. And try to suppress the spirit of people downtown. Okay, can it be? Your, your voice that's kind of cutting in and out a little bit. Go ahead and repeat it. Downtown Northampton. In downtown Northampton. Where? Where? The barrier. There. Where the what? Where? Where the parade starts. Oh, where will the parade start? Yeah. Yeah. And then, it... parade? Ronnie, are you talking about a parade? The parade. The parade. Yes. The ribbon tie. From where? From, from where? From, from where? where? From where? Yeah. He's asking where would the parade start from where? Rodney, do you mean the parade that happened um, two years ago that um, Jeremy helped organize, or do you uh, mean another parade? I have asked a question. I've asked the question. The parade will go through downtown. The parade will go through downtown Northampton. Boom. Boom. From where? From where? Right, right now we're not planning a parade. Uh, okay. So right now we're planning a movie showing. Uh, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, and we're talking about other ideas. A parade is a pretty good idea, I would say. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that could be something. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. So that could be something that um, maybe a group of people start talking about. Um, the 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 trick is that we have lots of great ideas and each event takes a lot of work to plan and make happen. So it depends how much each person on the commission wants to work to make it happen. So that's something we have to decide as a group um, you know, how much do we want to take on? I understand. I understand. Yep. Thank you for explaining. Thank you for explaining that. You're welcome, Rodney. I'm trying to speak slowly and enunciate because I know the closed captioning is tricky <laughs> and doesn't always do a good job. So that's why I'm speaking slowly. I, I hope it helps with the mm -hmm. closed captioning. Ah. Yes. Okay. Um, so are there a few people who want to start talking about the uh, planning for Disability Pride Month? Yes, I'd like to volunteer for that. Excellent. I'll volunteer for that. Awesome. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, 
I would too, but um, if I don't know how many people, it's too many people, mm. and if there are other people interested, they could mm. certainly take my spot. <laughs> we can also cycle out if we need to, mm. I, you know, yeah. have a meeting and then another time a different group of three people meet. Mm -hmm. um, we just have to be careful with the forum regulations. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's great. And I'd, I'd be happy to, to cycle in as mm -hmm. well, Emma, so we can um, coordinate. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll have two more folks joining the commission and then we can have larger subgroups meet. <laughs> yeah. Um, That'd be great. Okay, thanks. Anything else on that before we move on? I'm, really good. I'm all set, Rodney says. Mm -hmm. So the last thing mm -hmm. I think is the snow removal ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, Keith, are you, did you have a chance to pull that up to be able to yep. screen right. share it? I wanted to, for all of us to revisit what the ordinance says so that we can then base our conversation on the ordinance. Oh, that's tiny letters. Where are my glasses? <laughs> mm. Um, oh goodness, I think I might have to do that. Mm. Oh, thank you, Keith. <laughs> okay, if you don't mind, I'll read this as well for so we all hear it and see it. The owner responsible for a building, structure, or lot of land bordering on any street, lane, court, square, or public place within the city where there is a sidewalk, including any curb ramp cut, shall, after snow has ceased to fall thereupon, or whenever snow shall have collected or deposited upon any such sidewalk, within 24 hours, remove the same or cause the same to be removed from such sidewalk, and also remove or cause to be removed from such sidewalk or cover or cause to be covered with sand or some other suitable mm -hmm. substance within 24 hours after it has formed or appeared any ice with which the same may be encumbered in such a way as to render mm -hmm. such sidewalk safe and convenient for travel to the full width. For property located mm -hmm. in the central business districts mm -hmm. or the Florence Village districts as delineated on the Northampton zoning map, the above requirements must be met within 24 hours or by 9 a.m. on the next business day, whichever is sooner. If a person is found to be violating the provisions of this section, it shall be the duty of the chief of police or his her designee, the director of public works or his her designee, or parking enforcement officers to assess a fine to any such person in accordance with the fine schedule set forth in Chapter 40, Enforcement 40-5, each 24-hour period, a violation of subsection A or B mm -hmm. exists, shall be considered to constitute a separate offense. No person shall place, deposit, or move ice or snow onto the paved mm -hmm. surface of a street or onto a gravel shoulder area mm -hmm. of any upon neglect of or violation of the duties imposed by the provisions mm -hmm. of subsection A and B of 285-17, such duties may be performed by the director of public works or his or her designee at the expense of the persons or entities mm -hmm. liable to perform those duties. 
assessment of costs under this subsection mm -hmm. shall not preclude any party from being fined under 40-5. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Keith. Mm -hmm. So just so we have that in our minds. Mm -hmm. um, so this mm -hmm. was put on the agenda mm -hmm. as an invitation to brainstorm ideas because mm. what happens is that there are many, I don't know if that's fair to say, several mm. many buildings, mm. residences, and businesses that mm. don't comply with the ordinance. Mm. And it makes it difficult for, especially for people using mobility devices, certainly all people are affected, <clears throat> but if you're using a mobility device, it makes it virtually impossible to pass some places on the sidewalk when they aren't cleared. So that is why we're doing the PSA and to have that out for next winter or before. Mm -hmm. But if we want to brainstorm any ideas of how to approach this conundrum, um, then mm -hmm. we can take that to the city, mm -hmm. to the entities involved mm -hmm. um, and the mayor to see if any of these ideas can be followed through on. Um, one other thing before I open it up, I did speak with the mayor and she, along with Emma, had the simultaneously very good idea of seeing if parking enforcement could mm -hmm. issue tickets mm -hmm. when they are going around looking at the parking. Um, so I, she's exploring that. I don't know what the outcome of that is. So mm -hmm. the, thoughts or ideas about um, mm. how this could be handled. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I just um, I, um, wanted to echo or I wanted the, the, the idea that you were mentioning that the mayor and Emma both had about parking enforcement. I think that's a really great idea. And I know we've talked about it before, but I hadn't, I personally was not aware until just now that it was in this snow removal, uh, snow policy that you were reading that parking enforcement actually is listed there um, as one of the enforcers of the, of that ordinance, which I, I didn't even know that. Um, I, I should have known, but I'm glad I know now. Um, yeah. So I feel like that is a road we should try to go down if it's possible. If, I mean, if parking enforcement is in the ordinance as one of the enforcers of that, if, I wonder even if they have, if they've done it yet, like, like I, it sounds like they haven't, you know what I mean? So it seems like they should be if they're, if they are listed as an enforcer of that. So yeah, I, I like that idea. Thanks, Jeremy. Other thoughts? So the PSA will be, oh yes, thank you, Rodney. I think it's, yeah, the rules of snow shipping, the rules will be put in that neck as an intern. And I've that put mm -hmm. in, yeah, it may, that I can be then I can have ideas and not to improve that place. Yeah, I think Rodney is, is saying that he thinks it would be a good idea to send an email out and collect ideas and talk about it at the next meeting. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So um, can I confirm that you mean 
we all email ideas to Keith before the next meeting. Hmm. Is that correct, Rodney? Yes. Okay. Yes. That sounds mm. like a, a great idea. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Um, are folks willing to spend a few minutes thinking about possible solutions and emailing mm. Keith in the next couple weeks? Mm. That would be great. The, um, the PSA mm. will be an educational tool that we can share with the city. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if there are any other mm -hmm. ways to educate um, folks who are, particularly the folks who are who are mm -hmm. not shoveling. Um, mm -hmm. Did you see the comment from Ben? Sorry, I'm just reading it. Uh, ben says, I've often heard from the city that snow must be removed mm -hmm. within 24 hours from mm -hmm. the end of the snow I'm event. Zoom this is what mm -hmm. is on the FAQ at Northampton.gov. Um, the ordinance itself makes it look like it should be measured from the start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also thought it was from the end, but then it also in the ordinance had by 9 a.m. of the next business day. That was new. Is, that was new information to me also. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's less than 24 hours if it, you know, if it stops snowing at 10 p.m. and then it needs to be cleared by 9 a.m. of the next business day. So um well, only in the business districts, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are there particular areas that are that are problematic that we could focus on for um in like informing people like telling all the businesses i mean the you know little streets might be harder to blanket so to speak with information but flyers or something in the business districts might be easier i don't know if that's a particular concern i don't know where it's where the trouble spots are really yeah does anyone have experience with any of the trouble spots? Um, I don't. Yes, yeah, from from I think, feel like personally for me, a lot of the trouble spots are the curb mm -hmm. cuts, um, that lead up to the sidewalks. That's one of the biggest, biggest offenders, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. um yeah, I don't know that one particular area. That's off. That's always troubled. Emma, do you have? Sorry, you. I was just gonna agree with you. Like the whole city feels like a trouble spot. Exactly. People yeah. Don't they... have trouble like wide enough pathways. All the area like around the building I live in isn't like. I just. Yeah, I don't I don't really know how to answer the question about like troubled areas cuz I just feel like it's so there's just so much trouble yeah. area. <laughs> and I would say for me personally, I would agree with Emma that um the, just the area surrounding me also is all like whenever it snows the building that I live in they they don't shovel the sidewalks properly or the or the cur the curb cuts um, that, um, at the crosswalks, like, you know, I'll have to like, I have to do detours all the time, go in the middle of the, to go into the middle of the street, you know, in order to find a safe way back onto the sidewalk. Um, yeah. So I would say, and I live on Hampton Avenue and Pleasant Street, you know, on like the corner. So I, when I look out my window, I see Pleasant Street and it's often the sidewalks are, ter are terrible, you yeah, know, when, it's, I mean, when it snows. Sorry, I didn't cut you off. Uh -huh. Oh, no, no. I guess it could be worth firing on Main Street and Pleasant Street, but there, I mean, I don't, 
Yeah, I, I, so, I almost feel like it's like wherever you live, if you are a disabled person, yeah. you're, you you know what I mean? It's like, so, like, because, you know, I don't know, it's like, like Emma said, it's almost like it's the whole city. Hmm. Yeah. It's almost like we need a, a, a team of people who are able to navigate in snow to go out and, you know, travel around the, the, at least the downtown, right. And look for these spots that are not navigable. Right. Yeah. It's like, um, that's, yeah. If some, if there were somebody doing that for the disabled people, I think that would solve the problem because our issue is that when we go, we don't want to go out and endanger our health by getting in some sticky situation and getting our wheelchair stuck in the, on the middle of the street or something, you know, we don't want that. So Absolutely. if there's just any way to avoid that, I think that's the answer. Yeah. yeah. Having someone to find those trouble spots for us. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jacob, yes, there's a, a place on the, Jacob asked if there's a hotline or how about a hotline um, on the city's website, there is a place to uh, report um, a non-compliant sidewalk, you know, a sidewalk that needs shoveling. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Ben, thank you for for the the details in the chat. So 24 hours after the snow has ceased to fall, um, and oh, so sorry, 24 hours. Looks like snow is after the snow has ceased to fall, but ice is within 24 hours after it has formed. So those were the um, and yes, corners and boundaries like the curb cuts like what uh, Jeremy and Emma were talking about. Uh, ben is commenting, seems like they are particularly problematic because folks often assume they are someone else's responsibility. And exactly, I was sitting here thinking, oh, so who is responsible for the curb cuts? Because someone shoveling might not think they're responsible for the curb cut. They might think the city's doing it, but the city is plowing and they're, the city's not doing the curb cuts. Um, I think you're exactly right. Uh, I think that like, yeah, like the manager in, in the building that I live in, I, I feel like they they probably assume that it's the city's responsibility to shovel the curb cuts and that's why it's not happening. And the city probably assumes that our building is shoveling it. Right. Yeah. So there's like a, there's like a it's a disconnect. Disconnect. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Ben just said there's a volunteer based Northampton Snow Squad, um, and he put the, oh, they're not, uh, Keith said they're not active. So we need to resurrect the Northampton Snow Squad, which sounds, I mean, who doesn't want to be on the Snow Squad? That sounds super cool. <laughs> Rodney, yeah? Go ahead, Rodney. I'm being a problem. I put you know, different, different, or not different. That problem has been going on for many years. This problem for shoveling or not shoveling has been going on for many years. Same problem. It's almost impossible to deal the problem when I'm the person. It's almost impossible to solve the problem 100%. Yep. Yes, and I wish, but we are not going to solve it right here in this meeting today. <laughs> it has been going on for many yes. years. So um, given that it is 513, let's go to Rodney's idea of sending any emails to Keith of any ideas that you've thought of during this time and haven't had a chance to say or ideas that come to you. Um, and if you could email Keith in the next two weeks, that would be fantastic. Um, okay. And so did, is anyone else with any last thoughts before I move on to the other business not anticipated? Okay, thanks. So other business not anticipated. Rodney, I know you had something to share during this time. Mm. Do you want to start? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. We'll be, we have, we I will be brief. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, 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 it. Good day. Good news. It's good news. That memorial, uh, will be repaired. That memorial Hall will be repaired. For $426 down dollars No. It's a very important but, building in downtown Northampton. I pretty much the uh, can have automatic doors. And automatic. I'm wondering if we can have automatic door openers. And a ramp. And a ramp. And elevators. And an elevator. Make sure it could be included. To make sure they're all included in the repairs. Downtown Northampton. But then put food. And I could see it if Jeremy were of good see the construction. And I'm wondering if Jeremy can oversee the construction. I put the put button to it. Make sure that the push button is the elevator and the ramp. I'm going to make sure. We need to make sure. Thank you. Thanks. Oh yeah, sorry. I was just going to mention that. Yeah, um, I, um, thank you for saying for mentioning that, Rodney. Um, yeah, I was part of the at our most recent council meeting. We were asked to approve the the funds of the four hundred twenty six thousand um, dollars um, to repair the memorial hall. So, um, and that was actually one of my what you mentioned, Rodney, about building a ramp. That was one of I suggested that that also. So I'm hoping that they'll listen about that uh, i hope that they'll listen to us about building a ramp there um i'm not sure yet if that'll happen but 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 mm -hmm. i'm definitely pushing for that because um, yeah. the the front stairs there's 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 there are stairs in the front there is also an accessible entrance on the side of the building where there are no stairs um but um yeah i do think it would help to to because they're already going to be renovating the stairs on that building they're going to be like fixing problematic stairs and so i i suggested to them if you're going to be fixing stairs maybe you could at least consider putting in a ramp mm -hmm. yeah and yeah and that that building for people that don't know it um there are vet veteran services in that building mm -hmm. so it is it is it does affect disabled people in the community like uh, disabled veterans mm -hmm. oh keith go ahead so the mod grant that i was awarded ninety six thousand mm dollars -hmm. part of that Includes putting an automatic door operator on the Pulaski Park entrance, so the outside door. Um, the so that's the west entrance. The east entrance already has one, and the grant also pays for the automatic door opener operator. Excuse me, for veteran services and retirement, and to make the service desks accessible because they are currently not. Um, and other buildings at um, around the city campus. Um, so those are, but that is sep that's grant money, totally separate project from the emergency that's happening there. And I work with central services, but they have a lot of projects in the in the in the fire right now. Um, so um, I'm, uh, they're helping kind of guide me through this, but um, it's kind of my project for those doors, but. Uh, yeah, um, that's ongoing. Fantastic. Thank you, you three, uh, to you three for the updates. Thank you for bringing that forward, Rodney. My pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else have other business not anticipated? No. Oh, okay. I, uh, uh, 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm ready to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> yes. Would you like to make a motion to adjourn, Rodney? Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Thanks, Jeremy. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Marilyn. All right. Thank you all for being here tonight. I'm sorry it went a little late today. We had two great presentations. Have a good night.